Now right here you can see a lesson that we came really close to learning the hard way. If you're going to upgrade your timing chain on a small block Chevy to a dual roller, which is something that you really should do, you got to clearance the block around this oil passage here at the front of the block behind the timing gear. We didn't do that on this block and you can see where the timing chain actually ate into the metal of the block, you know, putting a lot of shrapnel through the motor. Luckily this one, it lost a little bit of oil pressure, I think actually from a cam bearing. It looked like it was pretty scored up and there's a good chance that that was from the shrapnel that came off of that. Another thing you can see here that so this block used to be painted orange. There's a little flex of orange paint. It went through it went through the hot tank process and that orange paint that was on it got all flaky and kind of got into basically all the places in the block that you don't want there to be something like that. It's going to get sucked up in the oil oil system and potentially create is, create issues. So we gave it a nice coat of my favorite color primer gray but now we're going to do some cleanup on it so hopefully we can a prevent that from being an issue and b prevent all those little paint flakes from getting into the oil as well so while past me works on cleaning up this engine block present me thought that maybe it might be a good idea to discuss some of the comments from our engine failure analysis video now First of all, the response to that video just absolutely blew me away. I can't believe how many people watched it, how many people commented on it. So that was awesome to see. But I noticed looking back on it that basically I never, like I gave a reason or a method of failure, mode of failure for the engine, but I never really talked about what may have caused that to happen. So like basically that engine had a catastrophic failure due to a bad bearing or, or a bearing failure. Uh, there's been a lot of people that commented, oh, you know, it must have been over revved or, or the rod bolts stretched or something of that nature. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Uh, the fact is that engine had about 30, 31 nights on it. So it was used in, or it was built in 2020. And then it sat in a garage after being run for the whole 2020 season for about two years. And the fact of the matter is I didn't do a great job of storing it. Um, so there's a good chance that some moisture got into the oil, that there was some corrosion maybe on the, on the crank journals or something. But also right before it was put away for storage, uh, one of my buddies who, who was in the service at the time had just gotten back from deployment and we were celebrating his, uh, his birthday and him being home and we were getting pissed drunk and revving the thing up in the shop at one in the morning without properly letting it warm up first. So if I had to guess, I'd say that's probably when the bearing damage happened. And you know, this, uh, this motor that we're working on here in this video, you know, it, it lost oil pressure due to due to probably some of that shrapnel from the timing chain going through the, going through the cam bearings. Uh, so we had to pull that motor out. We had to press the backup motor into service at a moment's notice. Didn't really have time to, to go through it and take everything apart like we should have. And uh, yeah, whatever damage there was previously, that's, that's what led to that catastrophic failure. So now we've got the engine superficially clean, but of course that's not going to be good enough for final assembly. In order to get it prepared for that, we've got to go through and clean out all the oil passages. In order to do that, first we've got to get the plugs out of those oil passages. So we're going to start with the main passages that run front to back in the block. And they've got these pressed in plugs at the front, which you may or may not know, it's a pretty standard thing in the performance industry to replace those with, uh, with, tapped, with drilled and tapped plugs, pipe plugs. Um, I didn't do that here, but you probably should. So that's one of those, uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of things. But in order to tap those out, there are, there are pipe plugs in the back. So we got to take those out. We've also got this plug right here. And there's actually a little pressed in plug underneath this oil passage that goes down to the rear main, uh, rear main bearing cap. 
So we'll show that. And then last but not least, we've got this little plug right here on top of the oil filter boss. So we're gonna take those all out. I'm gonna use a long piece of rod that I keep around to tap the plugs in the front out through the back of the block. And then we'll go to town on cleaning it. All right, so I got the plugs at the back of the block out. Here's this piece of 3 16 rod that I keep around just for this purpose. I'm gonna stick this through the oil galleys and drive out the plugs at the front with a small hammer. All right, so we got her back on the stand. We got the plugs out of the front and the back of the oil galleys, and we got this one out above the oil filter boss here. So now there's a couple more left to do. We got this one up here, and you know, from the factory, a lot of these, instead of using a hex pipe plug, they'll use a quarter inch square drive pipe plug. So you can use a, like a quarter inch adapter, basically to get those out if you don't have the right socket for that. I already loosened that one up. It wasn't that loose to begin with. So we got that one out. Now let's take a look at this one that sits inside this main vertical oil galley. So here we can see viewed from the bottom of the block that little plug I was talking about. It sits inside this main vertical oil galley which is the main feed from your oil pump. There's a lot of kind of conspiracy and misinformation about this plug that I found on the internet when I was first researching how to build these engines. You know, a lot of people say if it's missing, you won't have any oil pressure. Well, that's not true, but it does serve a very important function. You see your oil filter mounts right over here, and that main oil feed galley that goes vertically, it splits off into the inlet and the outlet of your oil filter passage. This little plug divides the inlet and the outlet, so it forces the oil as it flows out of the oil pump to divert and go through your filter. If that plug's not installed or it pops loose, then your oil's not getting filtered. You can sort of see from that angle your oil filter passage come in from the side. If you don't have that plug driven in far enough, it'll block that oil filter uh, passage. Or if you drive it in too far, it'll block the passage on the other side. So there's kind of a lip in there, which you can't really see right now because the plug is sitting right on it. But you basically want it to sit just inside that lip, kind of the same way that your, uh, say, your freeze plugs sit just inside the lip. So now I'm going to use my trusty 3 16 steel rod to drive that plug out just like I did the other ones. So this one drives out through the bottom of the block. I'll use the same rod later to reinstall it. Now, we're ready to clean our oil passages. Now, for cleaning the oil passages, we got two of probably my favorite tools in the whole shop. First of all, we got this box of engine brushes. I usually go through one of those pretty much every build season. You know, they're pretty cheap, although, like everything else, they have gone up in price. But there's a whole bunch of different sizes in there for getting into all those different oil galleys. And then, of course, good old trusty squirt bottle full of gasoline. Now, I use gasoline instead of brake clean for this for a few reasons. One, it's a lot cheaper. Two, the fumes don't kill me quite as bad. And three, since I painted this block, the acetone and the brake clean would make the paint run and probably get into places I don't want it to. So this will still be a solvent, but not nearly as bad. Plus, since I switched over to E85 last season, I got to use up the rest of this race gas somehow. All right, and that's pretty much it. You just go to town with your squirt bottle and your brushes. Shove it on in there and then, you know, give it a nice rip start. And just do that over and over again. It helps to have uh, an air compressor charged up with some compressed air. You can use that to clean your brushes off. 
And you can also use that to knock any debris that you may knock loose off of the engine so any crud that you knock loose isn't building up. But yeah, you generally just do this, uh, do it as many times as you think you should and then do it about two or three times more. There's no such thing as having an engine block that's too clean. Last but not least, you want to make sure you get these main bearing oil passages. You know, the ideal way to do this would be to do it before you install the cam bearings because these actually terminated the cam bearings. So there's always a possibility that you can get some gunk built up on the back side of those if you do this with the cam bearings already installed like we are. Unfortunately, I don't have the capability to install cam bearings myself. I have to do it at the machine shop. And you got to clean the block like this anytime you get it machined. So that's just the situation we're in. And that's why you always do this two or three more times than you think you need to. to make sure that, uh, you know, that you've done the best that you can to flush any gunk off the back of those bearings.